Hello and welcome to another episode of Shampoo and Booze. This is episode number 60 at shampooandbooze.com. We are a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals. We are Ryan and Ashley, sisters who both run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. You can send your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com and we'll do our best to cover the topics you care about. We're also available to give design and listing advice for your own personal Airbnb situation. You can check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. Part one of our little series on laundry. It's very important. (laughs) Is like one of the most important things you will need to do for your short-term rental. When we started, I did not even own a dryer. (laughs) We were just a couple of like hippie punks who had a washer that somebody gave to me. And uh, we started the rental and it's a three bedroom rental. So there's three bedrooms worth of laundry, uh, towels, kitchen towels, cleaning rags. It was the first week I was like, oh, I need to get on Craigslist right now and buy a dryer as soon as possible because I can't, there's nowhere to dry any of this stuff and it's humid outside and it's like crazy. So that, that, those are my humble beginnings with laundry. I'm so amazed that you didn't start with a dryer. I don't know what I was thinking. I thought that I would be able to like hang it out in my yard or something. I don't, <laughs> honestly, I just... Don't know what I thought. Well, you made a good point before we started recording, which is you didn't realize in starting this business that this business is actually about cleaning and doing laundry. That's what this business is about. I came up with, this is like going to be another episode, but I came up with the three C's, which is communication. And that is with your guests and your cleaners and your maintenance people or whoever those people are, your partner. The second C is cleaning because you are cleaning the house all the time and whether it's you or someone else and you're cleaning laundry all the time. And the third C is constant maintenance. (laughs) So three Cs, I love that. Those are my three Cs. Not to be like having corporate speak or anything, but I was like, that's what you deal with. So today we're, we're talking about the cleaning aspect of it, and that is laundry. So Mm -hmm. how do you clean your linens? It seems like a very simple question. Like a lot of times Jay is just like, just throw it in the washing machine. Like what is the, (laughs) what is the mystery here? Right. But there's really an art to it. And when it comes down to being efficient and making things look good, you know, it has to be done well. Right. So the first thing that we've talked about in other episodes is detergent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've been to Airbnbs where they use a very perfumed detergent and a very perfumed like um, softener and softener sheets. Mm -hmm. And it is a nightmare. It's horrible. And why? I mean, for me, I'm like, it, it almost feels like they're trying to cover up bad smells. <laughs> and it's like, not the thing you want to crawl into at night is something that smells like a chemical factory. So what kind of detergent do you use? Um, I use anything that's unscented. So usually, you know, it's funny, I feel like, you know, there are liquid detergents and there are dry detergents. And I always joke that liquid detergents, you know, you're basically paying for a bunch of water, but I find that they clean better than using the dry detergent, but we'll get into that a little bit more. So I use anything that's unscented. What do you you use? So I was kind of joking around with you um, when we were talking before this that I honestly, I use a liquid detergent, which again, yes, I agree. Like you're paying someone to transport basically water. Um, But I buy it at the grocery outlet. We have this like super discount grocery outlet. It's two cents an ounce. It's literally the cheapest detergent I could find. Even if I made it myself, it wouldn't be that cheap. Um, So it is mildly um, scented. I mean, it's so mildly scented that 
even when I take it out of the washer after washing, I don't smell anything. Mm -hmm. And that was important for me. Like I bought a bottle just to try it. Just like, am I going to be able to smell this? And by the time it's washed and then dried, you can't smell anything. So that again was important to me. And we have, we're about to put our third rental online. So that'll be nine bedrooms plus like, you know, a million towels. It's like, I need something that's just, I can buy in bulk. It's affordable. I just buy like 10 to 15 bottles at a time and like store it on a shelf. That's what works for me is like this super cheap, you know, like basically industrial level (laughs) um, liquid detergent. And, you know, for you, it's, it's all about bulk. It's all about things that you can get at a discount that are high quality And for me, because I don't have as many rooms as you, I just have one and you have nine bedrooms plus, you know, for me, it's not as big of an issue in terms of finding the kind of cheapest and best. Um, So it makes sense to me that you're in the you're in the bulk in the bulk aisle. Now, if you know, I'm saying I get it at a uh, grocery discount place, but but a place like Costco Like, you can buy, it's basically, like, hotel, industrial, not industrial level, but, you know, it's, like, commercial level. You can buy, uh, it's, like, this five-gallon tub of, of, um, like, the powdered stuff, and it's super cheap, and it lasts months and months and months, so you can get that there. You can also get, like, a big, like, big jugs of stuff. Like, Costco's great for stuff like that. You can, you can totally find, like, it's not Tide, like, Tide's gonna be expensive, but it's, like, the Kirkland brand, and it comes in, like, a big-ass, like, bucket, (laughs) and I, I actually use that a long time ago when we first started and it was great. So you told me recently that you actually cut in half what you were using for detergent. Why did you decide to do that? So actually you were at my house and uh, so we have that liquid detergent and you took the little cup that came on the top of the detergent and you were like measuring it and I'm like I always ignored that. I was always like whatever like I, I just... I I would pour it into the detergent cup. We have front loaders. So you like pull out the cup and you pour it in and and it has like a little level that's like max level, you know? I would just pour it up to the top. I'd be like, okay, max (laughs) max level. I mean, I kind of knew, but I I think in my mind, I was like, I want everything to be really clean, you know? Extra clean. Extra clean. But really, you don't need that much. So, So when you had the little cup measurement and then you poured it in I was like that barely fills the thing at all so yes I I've just been using like I'll I'll basically pour that much in it's it's between a fourth and a half full in the in the cup that -hmm. that comes with the washer so that helps me because then I'm using less I'm like okay I just I just doubled what my bottle will do Right. Over time. Now, do you, so you've never experimented with making your own alternative detergent. I have in the past for my own laundry made my own detergent. Um, I even made a video about it. I should probably link to that. Um, What I used to do is I used to buy, you can buy two different um, like big bar laundry soaps that you can like cut up and grind up. One's called Fells Naphtha. I think that's what it's called. And one's called Zote. And you can grind those up or cut them up into pieces and put them in a blender. And you can throw in baking soda and borax and like washing soda. Like you you can honestly, you can just get these at Walmart or wherever. Like grocery stores have that stuff in the laundry section. And you can make your own detergent. But I was finding that it honestly was not cheaper. Like it, it didn't seem like it was better. It didn't seem like it was cheaper. It is all natural, like mostly all natural stuff, which is good. If you want to do that, you can make it yourself. But uh, number one, it takes time to make that stuff. So in order to make like a big bucket, you know, that would take me, you know, an hour or more uh, to make that stuff. And I, I did like the quality of it, but it just it honestly comes down to time. Like if I can spend the same amount of money I'm spending on those in- ingredients and just like buy a bottle, <laughs> I'm just like done, you know, at this point. But I would love to hear if people make their own detergent. You know, like my thought also is, can I just throw in a cup of baking soda? And like, I- I've read online before where people are like, 
use a cold wash. Honestly, you can wash with almost no detergent because it's the water and the friction of like the movement that cleans things. Uh, the soap helps because it gets things slippery, but, mm-hmm, right. you know, I've been like, can I just, like, be ultra natural and ultra no chemicals and no scents and just be, like, buying massive things of baking soda and just, like, huge scoop baking soda every time. It's good for your septic. It's, you know, it's all fine. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious if anyone listening uses baking soda or borax or any of those things. I don't use bleach. I use OxyClean when it comes to getting things out. I actually took, I had a, my own personal sheets that I wasn't using for Airbnb and they were clean already, but I felt like they were getting kind of dingy and I soaked them in OxyClean overnight. And it was like, they were like a brand new set of sheets you know, and it's not corrosive or anything. So I often will throw OxyClean in there for a load every once in a while, but I don't use it every time. Do you use it every time? I use it every time uh, just because I'm honestly like, maybe, you know, I bet I could cut down uh, my usage because I buy huge boxes at Costco. It's I think it's the best price you can get at Costco. It's just this like massive box of OxyClean. I I could probably cut down to every other time that I wash like a a house set of stuff just to cut down on using it so much. But I also use half of what they recommend because, again, I'm like, I don't think I think OxyClean benefits from being like, put a cup, you know, put two huge scoops in. I'm like, I don't think I need two huge scoops. I think I need one little one. (laughs) So I do use OxyClean also. Um. I have had that experience as well where, um, you know, something will start to look a little dingy, like some towels or some white sheets. And I, one of my front loaders has a soak function. So I'll do like two big scoops with hot water, like a hot, um, soak. And then I actually press pause on the washing machine and I let it sit overnight. Because the soak on my washing machine is 30 minutes. I'm like, that's not enough. Like, you need to soak it overnight. So I just press pause after, like, five minutes, and I just ignore it until the next morning. And it, it it's amazing. It, I feel like an infomercial. <laughs> yeah, well, I have, a, I have a top loader, and what's amazing about it is to put a clean set of sheets in and have it soak overnight. And in the morning, it's like the water is all gross. And I'm like, how? It's like totally clean sheets, you know, but it's, I I feel like I have that kind of like weird satisfaction. I mean, I've always had a weird satisfaction with making things clean. So that's not a bad thing. you You don't use bleach. I, so I have a little tiny, like $1 bottle of bleach. It's like the cheapest bleach you can buy at Walmart. It's all the same, honestly. Um, it's like top job bleach. It's a dollar. Uh, but I just keep it for emergencies. Like I had a couple towels that had, I don't know what it was, but these women must have had like this bright orange self tanning. I don't know. I mean, I looked at this. It was like a, um, a hand towel and a washcloth. They were bright. It looked like they spilled Kool-Aid. Maybe they did spill Kool-Aid. I don't know. But I was like, I'm going to try to clean these. And I, I ran a, a bleach load with a couple of the things that were stained. It didn't come out. It didn't, <laughs> I had to get rid of them. But I keep bleach for situations like that um, where something turned pink somehow. I don't know how that happens. Sometimes people, one of our houses has a little like super efficient washer. So people will like wash stuff and they'll like, wash I don't know they'll wash stuff sometimes and stuff turns pink and I'll do a little bleach load I try not to use a lot though because we have a septic system so and have you ever used any kind of softeners or softener alternatives we have really hard water like I have to soak stuff in vinegar all the time (laughs) like my sinks and my toilets like they get this like calcium buildup after like a couple months and I always have to soak them so what I do is For my towels in the little like fabric softener cup, I pour vinegar in there. White, just plain white vinegar. I buy it by the gallon. Um, And that helps. I, when we first started, my mom, our mom was like, you gotta get, you gotta get a fabric softener. 
and you got to use what are those like dryer sheets they're like fabric softener dryer sheets. and i'm just like it's all chemicals number one most of them are scented i think you can buy unscented but it's just another like chemical to put in in the washer and when i when i uh looked it up online like you know laundry softener uh alternatives people were like just put vinegar in it doesn't smell like it rinses out you pull your laundry out and it smells like nothing it's not like it smells like a salad you know what i mean it's not like (laughs) it's not a cucumber wash right exactly so yeah so i use vinegar as a softener alternative the other thing i looked at for a while were these like natural wool like dryer balls um you can buy them you can buy them on ebay you can buy them on amazon you can buy them on etsy people make them you can make them too if you have like if you're crafty (laughs) yeah if you're like crafty they're super easy you like boil wool and i was using those for a while to help the airflow and to help with static because those those like what are they the fabric softener sheet things that do have chemicals all over them they um they help with static and for a long time I was using those, but they they get so caught up in the sheets, like especially fitted sheets, like they get stuck inside and become this like massive like wet ball. I'm just like, I couldn't, I was like, I can't, I can't do this. It might work for some people, but yeah. it didn't work. So you can buy them from me on eBay. I think I have mine on eBay right now. So what do you, do you have a hard water? Do you have a softener? Do you need I that? I don't, I don't have to use softener. No, I think Good. because it's city water. I don't know. I've never had a problem with it being too hard or too soft. Yeah, that's good. So let's talk about stains because that's, those are the hardest things to deal with. I remember early on how frustrated you were with makeup. Oh my God. Like makeup being all over different things and how you created alternatives for people to have makeup remover and things like that. Right. Didn't you offer like makeup remover sheets or something? Yeah. So makeup is a big deal. Like if you go on any of like the Airbnb forums, community forums, or even like on Reddit, I mean, everyone's like there's makeup like you have these beautiful white towels and then you know people go to weddings and then they come home and they like wipe their face off on your towel (laughs) and that stuff just honestly does not come out um there are ways to get it out and this is how i get out makeup um i use like it's like an oxyclean spray And before, do not wash it, do not dry it, because that, like, sets everything in permanently, right? So what I do is I spray it with this, like, stuff, and then, I mean, this is crazy. This is if you're like, I really want to save this towel. It's a brand new towel. I just bought it at Costco. I would really love to try and save it, you know? It's got mascara on it. That stuff is made... Waterproof. Yeah, it's made to never come off your face, like, (laughs) you know... So what I do is I take a little toothbrush, an old toothbrush, and I scrub it in all different directions, and then I spray it again, and I scrub it again, and I let it sit overnight. And then if that doesn't help, you just have to get rid of the towel. Like, that's just what happens. There is a lot of controversy about... This is, it's not controversy, but it's just... It's a lot of differing opinions, you know... People will put these little uh, black or brown um, washcloths in the house, in in the Airbnb, and have it embroidered. You can buy them on Etsy, uh, <laughs> and it'll say makeup. And people will leave it. I've seen at other Airbnbs and B&Bs where it'll have a little sign that's like, use this to remove your makeup, which I find disgusting <laughs> because I'm like... There are makeup stains on these that I can't see. Like, I would never want to use that on my face, basically, right? Right, right. Well, I I feel like the the things that are... Honestly, I've never really had makeup problems with people. I don't know. It's I think it's just because of the volume that you have. I don't have... Weddings. You know what I... Weddings, It's about people... Look, in my county, there's like 20 wedding venues... Yes, exactly. So people are coming for that explicit reason. I have had people, I don't know what it is, but I've had people like bleach 
towels by accident because I have a couple towels that are colored. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, I don't know what you're putting on your face, but yep. like they'll wash their face and they'll dry it on the towel. And it, I've had people bleach towels and bleach pillows with like whatever like cream they're putting on their face. I know what it is. Um, it is, is it retinol or something? Yes, I think it is an acne treatment that has uh-huh. peroxide in it. Yes, right. Because I actually just saw one of my pillows today, and it's a green, it's like a green pattern pillow mm-hmm. that goes along right. with an Ikea um, right. duvet. And it has this bleach mark on it. And yes. you're like, how would that happen? And that's, I'm pretty sure it's some kind of um, medication. Yeah, and so that's the kind of thing where I think, well, obviously you've had this happen in your home, like <laughs> maybe like put it to, ta- I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. So I've had that happen actually more than I think I've had like serious makeup stains. Um, but I, I think a good alternative is to offer makeup remover, either yeah. pads or, um, you can find like single use makeup remover towelettes kind yeah. of thing. And then uh, have those in the bathroom. That's so, what we do. I yeah. you can go to Walmart. Um, our Walmart has like it's like a two pack of like a hundred. Um, just they're generic, and it sucks because yeah, they are single use, and you throw them in the trash and whatever. But if I know someone's coming for a wedding, I tell my cleaners put it on the sink. And I I've had less and less problems now that I have the makeup removers. Um, yep. Again, you can provide makeup removers. You can also provide, which I don't like those, but the dark washcloths. People will still use the hand towel. It doesn't yes. matter. They yes. just will. And it's one of those things where, you know, Jay always tells me, he's like, if you have to replace one, you know, towel in every X amount of, you know, stays that have happened, it's really not that much money. Like, it's a yes, couple bucks. That is true. That is so, absolutely true. So yeah. that's makeup. <laughs> that's the so makeup. that's makeup. Makeup odyssey. Um, something that also happens, and it tends to happen on my bunk beds, grease. Because whatever, there are little kids eating in bed. <laughs> yeah, little kids who eat in bed. <laughs> Which we try to discourage, but whatever. It just well, happens. La- wasn't it the last episode where we talked about people making bacon on vacation how it's like it's like make bacon on vacation give it to a child they will sit in a bunk bed and eat it (laughs) or they have greasy hands and they jump in the bed or something so how do you deal with grease so grease is actually super easy and it's so much better than makeup it's just so if you're like it's easy to spot a grease stain. You know, if you look at the sheet, even if you've already washed or dried it, that's still okay. Usually I spot the stains when we're folding because when, when else are you going to see it? Mm-hmm. Um, so what you do is you take, and most people say Dawn dish detergent, but it's really any dish detergent, whatever, um, you know, soap. It's like a concentrated soap that you use if you're hand washing dishes. You put it on there, you rub it around the stain and you let it sit overnight. Just let it sit with the soap overnight. It's gonna break the it's gonna break the grease down. If I'm like cooking hamburgers or whatever and I get a grease splat on my on my shirt, I do the same thing. I grab some soap and I put it on there and I throw it in my hamper and the next time I wash it, it's gone. It works. So that's an easy way. Well, you know, Dawn is what they use when there's um, an oil spill to clean waterfowl because it binds to oil without being like water soluble. Yep. So I have like a thing of just like generic, not, it's not generic. It's just like the original Dawn scent, you know, whatever that I just got at Walmart and I just keep it in my laundry room. So any, in a, in a big bottle, it's like a 32 ounce bottle. It, it's lasted me years. Cause that's all I use it for. Um, so that's amazing. I have another, I have another alternative to that, which is, um, chalk actually Mm. works for grease stains as well. Uh, grease spots. I've used it on sweaters and things like that, but, um, so I haven't used it in the context of linens, but, um, actually, I don't think I have it here, but, um, my partner uses chalk at the gym 
And so it's actually like really soft chalk. It's not like what you would use on a board. And you just, you sprinkle it on the area and you let it sit overnight. And then you just wash it like you would normally. And it actually soaks up the grease spot. So it could be, it could be an alternative for something that can't get washed necessarily, like a couch or, you know, it's like, let it sit there overnight and maybe you could just scrub it with water after or do something like that, vacuum it up. I don't know. But anyway, chalk is another, another trick. That is a great point, uh, that stuff in your house or in your space is going to get stains on it, like a couch. I've had to replace yep. couches that had like red wine stains on them where I'm like, I can't get this out. I don't know how. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, actually red wine. I'm trying to think how I get red wine out. Um, so red wine or blood, I think is the same thing I use. So I buy this in bulk at Walmart. I buy the big bottles. They're 88 cents. It's hydrogen peroxide. This stuff is a miracle. So this is also good for... Um, on a couch or a mattress or something like that. Because the cool thing about hydrogen peroxide is when it dries, it doesn't have to be washed off. So if, if, so I have like, I have like on my mattresses, I have a waterproof zip up thing that zips over the whole mattress. And Me then too. I, okay, good. Yes. Yep. That's like a whole other episode. Yeah. Every mattress should be, I mean, there's, there's something to be said too about, um, covering it for stains and things like that but also dust mites yep. bed, bugs, bed bugs like being able to basically secure your mattress right. is really important we could have a whole episode about that yeah so the zip on is important but i also have a waterproof like quilted cover above that which seems a little crazy but if if my cleaners see that there's a stain that went through the sheets they can just pull that off and send it back and the mattress is still protected. I do the same thing. I yep. have another quilted top. Good. Um, because often, like, sometimes someone will stain something or whatever, and they want to pull it off and wash it. Right. And if they decide to pull it off and wash it, what they see under that sheet should be very clean. Right. You know, they shouldn't pull their sheet off and it's like a stained bed cover. Or a stained mattress, but ho hopefully your mattress is covered. It's funny you say that because that is the reason why I have two covers. Exactly. It's because I have had, especially at our first rental, I don't know, I have these like overzealous people who are staying that want to strip all the beds, which is fine, but I'm like, it doesn't save my cleaners or me that much time. Like stripping the beds is the fastest thing you could possibly do. Making the beds is what takes forever. I'm like, can you make the bed? I'll give you the <laughs> That's funny. Um, well, and also, I was going to ask you this later, and we can talk about it later, but, you know, if you have a system for how you strip things and how you, right. you know, yes. so I, I know you do have a system for that. So sometimes if somebody pulls all of that stuff before you get to it, you don't know what's where and what came from where. Right. So the 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 point of having all the covers on the sheets, I'm sorry, on the mattresses is... So that, number one, the mattresses don't get stained. And number mm -hmm. two, you can clean those covers. So, any, like you said, if someone pulls the sheets off and there's stains all over it, I mean, what a horrifying sight gross. that is. Yeah, so gross. gross. I mean, you're like, I was sleeping on that, you know? Like, the sheets aren't that thick, you know? Yeah, that is not, that is not desirable. Yeah. But so what I was saying about uh, hydrogen peroxide, you can, I've had... This was before I had like a million covers on my mattresses. Stains would go through um, to the mattress, obviously, and I would I would throw hydrogen peroxide, like get get a rag and like spread it around and make sure it soaks in. You let it dry, and it's like it's gone. You know, the stain is gone. So, so I was actually just cleaning a little. You'll get blood stains. Like people will whatever. Like they're mm -hmm. they're. They're humans. Get their period. Yeah, all, of those all that. Pick yep. a scab, whatever. Yeah, it's so gross. Right. But, um, dogs. But, I mean, that's the other right. thing. <laughs> like, yeah, dogs exactly. Are gross. Like dogs stain things all all the time. Yep. And hydrogen peroxide. So what I do is it's the similar to anything else. If I see a blood stain or whatever, I'll like put the sheet in a um, kind of like in a big bundle, and I'll make like a little crevice, so it's like a little puddle. And I'll just pour, you know, a little puddle of um, hydrogen peroxide and 
I'll just check it. Like, I'm obsessive. I'm like, you know, I'll come back every hour and check if it looks like it's fading and I'll just like pour a little more. You know, if it if it's not fading or it's, you know, drying out, I'm like, okay, I'm saving this sheet. This is happening. I will save this sheet. And it works. And I think it works for um for red wine too. I I don't have many red wine stains on um on beds because that's just because not... that's that's a story. Yeah, because <laughs> that's something else that's happening. Um, but I have seen red wine stains on uh, carpets. Mm-hmm. On wood, that's one that I haven't been oh, able man. to clean. I don't know. I w- I- yeah, I was gonna say because you don't have this, but there c- you can stain uh, marble countertops too. Yes, so yes, people, please like seal your marble because if you have like marble countertops, people will. I I've never had experienced that, but people stain wood, like the the coffee table in the our farmhouse rental. I have a million coasters on every table. Doesn't matter. <laughs> like there is a red wine ring right in the middle of that table. I'm like, I don't know how that's getting clean. Like next to a coaster. Yeah, you're like next to a coaster. <laughs> so next yeah. to a coaster. Yeah. So what that's... about? Um, do you ever encounter rust? So the funny, yes, I've encountered rust, and I find it very difficult to clean. Um, And you can clean it with white vinegar. People have said, I've looked it up where, um, again, like you can do a little puddle thing of white vinegar. And I've I've actually never been able to get rust off. And sometimes I'm like, where is this rust coming from? Like, where would you be getting rust on like towels? I don't know. And so my thought is they're hanging it on something outside that's metal Mm-hmm. Like and it rains right. and it's wet and the towels wet or like over a shower rod, I, but my shower rod shouldn't be rusty. I don't mm-hmm. know. Um, the, yeah. uh, my other thought is that they're getting a rust stain in the dryer, like in my dryer. Oh, mm-hmm. but right. I'm just like, but I don't see it all the time. I only see it sometimes. I don't know. I've never been able. Like if if I get a rust stain on a towel. I will, like, take a pair of tweezers on the terry cloth and, like, cut those sections out. (laughs) Right, because it's it's so subtle. It's not, like, all the way soaked through. Right. It's, like, little dots of rusting. So I do that. That's it for the podcast this week. Stay tuned. Next week, we will have part two of our laundry episode. So if you out there listening have laundry tips, have things that you found to be efficient, helpful, chemical-free you know, scent free alternatives, um, send us uh, an email or send us an audio comment or um, comment on our YouTube channel and just let us know what you thought and what you found to be helpful for you. Thanks for listening to Shampoo and Booze at shampooandbooze.com. As usual, send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com. And we always do our best to cover the topics that you care about. Don't forget about our design and listing advice services. Head over to our services page at notperf.com and you can book design advice sessions with us. Bye.